Five, four, three, two, one, and lift off. Nicole's pitching down range. Stage one chamber pressure is not open. Just about 40 seconds into flight, Falcon 9 clearing the tower at Space Launch Complex 40 and making its way to orbit. We are currently throttling down the Berlin 1D engines on the first stage in preparation for the point of max Q. That's the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Maximum aerodynamic pressure is the point when the highest stresses are experienced by the vehicle during the ascent. With that, we are through the highest stresses on the vehicle. Coming up, we've got several events back to back. The first of those is main engine cutoff, or MECO. There will shut down the nine Merlin 1D engines in preparation for stage separation. Stage separation is where the pneumatic pushers will separate the first and second stages. And then we'll have second engine start number one. We just heard a call out for MVAC chill-in, so we've begun chilling in the turbo pumps in preparation to start the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. While the second stage engine is burning, the first stage will be performing a flip maneuver, and then it will do a boost back burn. That boost back burn will ignite three of the Merlin 1D engines uh, to make the first stage's way back towards land, since we are attempting a land landing today with this first stage. Stage one shutdown. Stage separation confirmed. In ignition. Stage one boost back startup. So there is those five events. Awesome shots from the ground. You can see the first stage boosting away. That was on the left part of your screen and the second stage continuing to burn. Now this burn on the first stage will last about uh, 47 seconds. Stage one boost back shut down. So there is successful shutdown of the boost back burn. You're seeing some pulses there from the ground from our attitude control system as we are also deploying our Bearing grid fins. Fairing separation confirmed. On the right-hand side of your screen, you just saw fairing separation. We may get a view of those fairing halves. In fact, you can see it on the right-hand side of your screen, just behind the Merlin vacuum. Heading back to planet Earth, we will be attempting to recover both of these fairing halves once they land back in the water on a recovery vessel named Bob. Now, if you're just joining us, welcome. We're about four and a half minutes into today's mission. We're in the first of two Merlin vacuum burns. First burn will last until about the T plus eight minute and 20 second mark. Next major milestone will be the first stage's entry burn. First stage is on the left-hand side of your screen. And we're now looking at a view uh, down the body of the first stage, past two of the grid fins back at planet Earth. Now we execute the entry burn in order to slow down the first stage before hitting the densest parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Vehicles are on a nominal trajectory. Without that burn, we'd be only using the atmosphere to slow down the Falcon 9, and that puts a lot of extra stresses on the rocket. So we ignite three of those Merlin 1D engines to slow down as we hit the thickest parts of the Earth's atmosphere. We had an on-time liftoff. 9.56 a.m. Eastern Time from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. And we're carrying the Transporter 6 mission on the second stage right now. It's SpaceX's sixth dedicated SmallSat rideshare program and our first mission of 2023. We're targeting at least three dedicated rideshare flights, two sun-synchronous orbit per year. And we also offer opportunities to ride to orbit on our Starlink missions, which launch about once a week. Now, these small sats can ride to space on 
our Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and the Starship vehicle in the not too distant future. You can see that the grid fins have deployed on the first stage. We've got four of these hypersonic grid fins near the top of the stage. And uh, once we get into the thicker parts of the atmosphere, it's only the grid fins that do the steering. To make our way back to landing zone one, you can actually see the Space Coast of Florida there on the left-hand side of the screen. Next major event coming up in about 15 seconds. Set, uh, that's the first stage's entry burn, but will ignite three of the Merlin 1D engines. Stage two, FTS has saved. Now keep an eye on the speed of the first stage in the lower left corner of your screen. You'll see that- Stage one, entry burn startup. Drop off dramatically as the entry burn is slowing us down. Pretty quick burn. This one will last about 20 or so seconds. On null trajectory. Stage one entry burn shut down. And there is successful shutdown of those Merlin engines. Now, as we are slowing down, re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, if you're uh, in the Florida area, you may hear some sonic booms. Stage one FTS has saved. We are attempting to recover this booster for the 15th time today, targeting this land landing at landing zone one. We've got just one more burn, which is the landing burn on the first stage. We'll ignite just a single center Merlin engine. That'll happen uh, just before touchdown. Stage one, transonic. On the right-hand side of your screen, we've got a ground view of stage one. You can see the center engine stage has one ignited. Landing burn. We'll expect to see the four stage landing two, legs deployed for a soft touchdown at landing zone one. Now, during this, we'll also hear a call out of second engine cutoff on the second stage. Stage one landing leg deploy. Seco. Stage one landing confirmed. So landing is complete. We also heard a call out there for Seco. Nominal parking orbit. Seco is second engine cutoff number one. We just heard a call out as well for nominal parking orbit. Now coming up, our next major event will be in about 45 minutes. That is for second engine start number two. And that'll be followed shortly by payload deploy of the first 35, excuse me, the first 35 payload deployment events. So we're gonna leave you with views from space and we'll see you back shortly for second engine start number two. Welcome back to our coverage of the Transporter 6 mission. So coming up, second engine start number two. And there is successful startup, SES-2, as well as second engine cutoff number two. Nominal orbit insertion. And with that call out from Mission Control, we are in the expected orbit. It's also worth mentioning that because these spacecraft are being deployed in groups in quick succession, we may not be able to confirm every deployment in real time, 
While you will hear most of the callouts by our mission control operators, we will try to provide updates for any that we don't hear real time by the end of the webcast. But for now, we're going to listen in as the payload deployment sequence is about to begin. Wait, that one. Separation confirmed. EV set two. Separation confirmed. Lemur two. Immaculate. Separation confirmed. Lemur two. One Tentaha. O one. Separation confirmed. Connect to T1.2, separation confirmed. Gamma Alpha, separation confirmed. Bro 8, separation confirmed. Newt, separation confirmed. Huygens, separation confirmed. Lemur 2, disclaimer, separation confirmed. Star Vibe, separation confirmed. Lemur 2, Steve Albers, separation confirmed. ISI launch Cleos KS F three A separation confirmed. Berkland separation confirmed. Space B one fifty six one sixty seven separation confirmed. Lemur two M Molo separation confirmed. ISI launch Cleos KSF-3B, separation confirmed. ISI launch Cleos KSF-3C, separation confirmed. As you may have noticed, we were able to confirm 77 of the 82 deployments. Now, because the spacecraft on this mission are small sats and because some of them deploy in close proximity to another, it can be difficult for us to confirm the deployments in real time. I've heard from our teams that we likely won't be able to make confirmations in the next few mi minutes. So we're going to end our live broadcast here, but we'll provide an update on those final confirmations via our social media platforms as soon as we receive them. We want to thank you for watching today's launch, and we'll see you next time.